everybody. I'm Colin Pullum. I'm Professor of High Pressure Chemistry and I'm certainly under pressure this evening. <laughs> so, so, so I work in the Centre for Science and Extreme Conditions. Now that's not to be confused with extremist conditions. That's the mistake that Nigel Farage and his UKIP band of followers made when they came to visit Edinburgh just the other week. I'm glad to say though that Nigel got a bit of pressure himself and scuttled back over the border. <laughs> So we're, what we're interested in is putting materials under very high pressures, thousands, even tens of thousands of, of atmospheres. So you may ask, well, how do you do that? Well, I'd like you to imagine a, a stiletto heel. And some of you ladies may well have worn stiletto heels. In fact, some of you gentlemen might have worn stiletto heels. So if you think about it, some of you may be wearing them now. <laughs> So, imagine, oh, a bit of science here, pressure is, is defined as force divided by area. So if you have a very small area, such as your stiletto heel, then you can get very large pressures. And so, even a sort of very thin uh, supermodel can stand on a stiletto heel and get really high pressures. So you can see the, see the concept now, a lab full of scantily clad supermodels <laughs> parading around on... They're quite excited, they're parading around <laughs> on, on stiletto heels. But there's a problem with these supermodels, right? First of all, they're, they're a little bit too skinny. They're not, they haven't got the weight to get the really high pressures. Second problem is they're very expensive. They've got very expensive tastes, as anyone who's been out with a supermodel may, may know. <laughs> the, other, the other problem is you have to keep cleaning up the sick after every lunchtime. <laughs> So we thought, well, let's, let's, let's think again, Paul. Well, OK, well, let's, let's go for Eric Pickles. Now, there's a man who has a healthy appetite for meat pies. And uh, so we thought, well, let's get Eric parading around in, uh, in, uh, in, a, in stilettos in our, in our lab. The, the PhD students put a stop to that one. They said, no, 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 we can't, we can't have that. So, and the other problem with Eric, of course, is that his uh, his, me his bill for his expenses, lunch for his lunch expenses, uh, really put quite a lot of pressure on the budget. <laughs> Wrong sort of pressure. So, instead, what we do is we use something called a diamond anvil cell. Now, that's, that really is very simple. It's two diamonds, and you put your sample in between. And you squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. And that means we have a lab that has no sign of Eric Pickles or any supermodels in the stilettos. And so what we can do with this is we can take alcohol and squeeze alcohol. And that's a great experiment to do because what happens, of course, is you get more, less volume. Now, if you, if you, of course, if you listen to the doctors, the health advice is, if you're a man, don't drink any more than 21 units in a week. Right? If you put it under pressure, though, your 21 units becomes five units. <laughs> and so it's fantastic because you can go to, the, uh, I go to the doctor and say, doctor, I can drink much, much more than that when I'm under pressure. <laughs> so we then moved on from, from alcohol to drugs and we thought, well, let's, let's try some paracetamol. Right, so we squeeze paracetamol. And if you squeeze paracetamol, you get a very new, dense form, which is fantastic for those extreme headaches you know, after a really, really heavy, heavy night on the town. Well, then we thought, well, let's be even more creative. Let's mix paracetamol and, uh, and, and alcohol together. We get a high-pressure cocktail. We squeeze this and to 10,000 atmospheres or more. And what we get is a fantastic cocktail. And you can imagine, right, that the alcohol gets you drunk, and then the paracetamol kills the resulting hangover. Perfect. Now, there's a slight problem with this. You have to drink this when you're at 10,000 atmospheres. So, you, you, so there are not many places in the universe where you can do this. Nevertheless, our dear friend Professor Brian Cox, uh, on his next uh, BBC series, Exploring the Universe, will be sitting in a bar drinking with this paracetamol alcohol cocktail. Now, this is a very strange world that, that Brian is, is, is visiting, right? very, very high pressures. And as you know, um, you might get some very interesting effects going on. So pressure makes things smaller. So you may get a uh, population in this bar of people like Tom Cruise and Nicholas Sarkozy. <laughs> pressure, pressure makes things more dense. And so you might get uh, aliens who are sort of a bit like Katie Price and Peter Andre. And, and, and of course, uh, it, it also can ch pressure can also think, make things change colour. And so you may get people like uh, Robert Kilroy-Silk with orange face and David Dickinson 
and a very angry, red-faced Nigel Farage, complete, complete with a bunch of swivel-eyed loons and keeping him company. So we, we, uh, we, uh, we've um, then moved on, of course, to um, we were fed up with looking at drugs, we got fed up with looking at alcohol, we said, well, let's, let's tackle something else, let's tackle explosives. And so that's what we, we, we do. And I was, I was explaining this to my mum the other day, trying to explain it to her, and she, she was she struck me a little bit. I said, well, look, mum, it's, it's not rocket science. And she said, son, well, actually, if I understood it correctly, I think it is actually rocket science. <laughs> um, anyway, so what, we, what we're looking at is, is, is um, um, trying to have, how we make explosives go bang, and in particular, um, trying to make sure they don't go bang accidentally. And so we have to be quite careful here. We have to take sort of a lot of, a lot of precautions. So these are the sort of things that are, that are, that are used in things like Semtex and plus other plastic explosives. And they're very, very shock sensitive, right? So if you hit them with a hammer, or if your PhD student turns up before 9.30 in the morning, then uh, <laughs> they, they, they think that the poor material is shocked and will, and will just, just, will just explode. <laughs> Now the other the other problem is is friction. Now friction can be a good thing, particularly when it's sort of this sort of rhythmic friction. <laughs> that, can, that can actually make make the earth move. <laughs> now, that's, friction's not so good though for explosives, right? You get get, some, get a bit of fric too much friction, explosive goes off, detonates. You, the earth moves for you, but it also moves for the rest of the people in the chemistry department. <laughs> Friction is a bit of a worry. Now, now the other problem with that is, is working with these materials is you tend, you tend to get traces on your clothes, on your shoes, or even on your bag. So this has caused problems when you go through airport security, as you can imagine, particularly in the USA. And it's a very good way of sort of making friends with, uh, with, with sniffer jocks. <laughs> so, uh, 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 Clinton, down boy. Clinton, stop, Clinton, stop humping my leg. <laughs> so I was in the, uh, passing, through the, passing, passing through the States not so long ago, and of course they, they, they swabbed my bag. Um, the scanner, all the red lights went on the scanner, just like sort of seen in downtown Amsterdam. And, um, and uh, so the, 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 uh, the, these big men with guns and very unfriendly looking faces came up to me and said, um, so what do you do, sir? Well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a chemistry professor. What sort, of, what sort of chemistry do you do? Oh, it's ex explosive something. <laughs> see where, see where, this is, where this is going. He said, I said what, what are you doing in the USA, sir? I'm going to a conference. Uh, that's what academics do, of course. And, um, and, and, and then and he said, well, what, what's the name of the conference? And it's the, it's the International Detonation Symposium. <laughs> so, three, three hours later, having narrowly avoided a one-way trip to Guantanamo, wearing an orange, an orange suit, um, and walking sort of rather gingerly, because of the, the slight tenderness in the anal sphincter, uh, I, I managed to, managed to connect, connect with my next, my next plane. But of course, it, it's not just materials that are under pressure. Some of the students, of course, are under pressure, I and mean, they have a very, very difficult life, lots of decisions to make, like, should I go to lectures, or should I stay in bed? Um, should I fill in this very important questionnaire sensibly, or should I just write down a load of crap and then, and then, get, and then go to the pub? Should I do some, um, some revision, or maybe lie in bed and then go to the pub? I have to say, judging from some of the exam scripts that I've been marking recently, some of you, I think, chose to stay in bed. And I think some of you actually chose to write some of the answers in the pub. <laughs> so we'll see you guys back in August. <laughs> now, one of the other problems that students sometimes have is they can't tell the difference between lecturers and professors. So I thought I'd give you a little helpful, helpful guide here. So, so, so professors tend to be older, have somewhat less hair, but it's a, it's a reasonable amount, you'll find. <laughs> But that's, that, is, that is changing, I have to say. It's very much like, very much like the police. The police are getting younger, uh, professors are getting younger, and I have to say, some of them are getting much, much more attractive. <laughs> um, what else about professors? <laughs> why, why, 
what else about professors? Well, they, they're often, they're never here. They're always uh, at conferences. So they go to conferences in, in Bermuda, in Hawaii, uh, Tenerife. Um, never, never, never. You can never track down a professor. Can you, Professor Campbell? Um, um, and, and, and so, um, now have you noticed that they never go to conferences in Scunthorpe or Barnsley or Cumberland? And the, and the, and the final difference is, is, is communication. So, I know, you'll all be familiar with the sort of the, the typical sort of lecturer's phone, which of course is a, designed for designed for two-way communication. You can you can talk, but you can also listen, can't you? Well, uh, there's a special university uh, issue phone that to all that your professors get, <laughs> and that looks like and that looks like this, and of course it's one-way communication. <laughs> I've been Colin Pullum. I've been under pressure. You've been great. Good night.